head of accounting at Hefnia. We are based in uh, Singapore. And uh, Paul, uh, can over to Paul? Yeah, uh, my name is Paul van Empel. I'm head of uh, competency assurance and training at uh, Willemsen. And we present to you today Team Black Sheep and their ideas on gamification. So whenever you're ready, start the clock. And <laughs> <laughs> OK, DEI is a notoriously difficult subject. It's not like uh, teaching somebody to overhaul an engine or navigate a particular passage. It's tough because we're talking about uh, deep seated uh, opinions, uh, experiences, upbringings, etc., that uh, shape how we view uh, DEI in a particular difficult context like uh, like shipping. So looking back at uh, what DEI, how successful it has been, you, we can conclude that uh, not many initiatives have uh, resulted in significant behavioral changes or reduction of biases in the workplace. And that's really something that we are after. So good intentions, poor methods. That is uh, the conclusion that uh, we draw after reviewing some of the materials. So I suppose the question before us is, how does one train DEI awareness amongst all these seafarers out there? And more importantly, achieve a lasting step change in behaviors and attitudes. Now, uh, shipping industry, I guess we could try the usual stuff that we do, and that is uh, CBTs, classroom trainings, code of conduct, uh, briefings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But these methods, quite frankly, are rather ineffective when it comes to a complicated subject where you want to achieve behavioral change. So we asked ourselves, what if we could create that safe environment where individual seafarers can learn about DEI anonymously, experience situations, experiment with responses, confront perhaps their own prejudices, get feedback on the decisions they make, get rewards for proper actions, and have some fun in the process of, uh, of doing all that. What we like to do is summon the power and awesomeness of gamification. Now, what is gamification? There's a lot of uh, stuff going around. It's simply play that makes us do serious things better. Now, that is the simplest uh, uh, definition we could come up with. So we are proposing to produce a mobile phone game and get seafarers emotionally invested in the topic of DEI. Okay, the skeptics out there, not everybody loves games, true. What about validation? Well, uh, we're in the good company of uh, nearly three and a half billion gamers in the world that uh, nearly clock three, three billion hours of gaming per week. Average age is, uh, is rising, so more and more elder people play games. Uh, there's a healthy uh, participation of, uh, of, of females in, in what, what's happening. And we've done the last couple of days uh, a little bit of uh, checking around in our own companies, Hafnia through, uh, through Kenneth and myself through Willemsen. And we have feedback from crew. And yes, people would love to try a game to see if that would be a good alternative to the usual stuff uh, that we do. You bet it is unique, and not only is it unique, it's cost effective, it's fun, it's engaging, it's very scalable, and it creates that safe space where people don't get criticized, don't get uh, ostracized, just you do this on your own. You can make it multilingual as you want, you can make it extendable with new levels, whatever, and more and more and more. So the game is the, the, the thing. We try to avoid mistakes that were made in other industries. It's really time to try out a game on DEI. Our team, we have experience in game design and production. Our game is low risk based on mature game technology, so game mechanics with scalability obviously off the chart, because the moment you have this thing in the can, then the, the sky is the limit. You can roll it out to whoever you like, as long as they have a mobile phone. And we, the Maritime DEI partners, including yourself, you have the network to indeed create that narrative that's important to, uh, to produce the game. Now, the nuts and bolts of it, and I'm not gonna go through all of this, but I'll touch upon a few points. Single player, first person adventure game. Okay, it's a branching storyline. So there's a multitude of outcomes. People make choices in the game, mobile phone, Five minutes per day is all it takes to uh, to participate in this game. 
style of the game could be anything could be a steampunk adventure could be alternative history could be dystopian utopian it does not make any difference for what we're trying to do we try to create an anonymous leaderboard so again you can do this in the privacy do a big uh, 20 seconds wrap up that would be great That's sure. okay um uh, this is my last slide so yeah uh, objective um you are the chief officer on a bulk carrier the ship is a mess, crew is dysfunctional, and highly toxic work environment make it a better ship. That is the objective of the game, and you do that through choices, through learning about DEI and learning about yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Questions? Judges, channel your... In a Simon Cowell. So I have a question which um, relates to kind of how you reach the seafarer. So you're saying it's a mobile, um, but how do you actually get them engaged? Is it kind of a compliance thing? Is it something where you gain points? How do you to get motivation? How would that work? OK, uh, I believe the, the, the game should be played on as much a voluntary base as possible. I expect people to sign up to this thing in, in as out of sheer curiosity. I would expect participating companies in this program to promote the availability of this app and make it free of charge to participating seafarers and let the rest, let the chips fall where, where they may. That is uh, the idea about this game. So we're not interested in, although we could, interested in who is the best performer in this or that, but let it be on a voluntary basis. That's extremely important uh, for this game. Quick, quick follow up question. Uh, you're saying uh, you're thinking about this as a voluntary basis. Yes, it is an issue around uh, DI issues being blind spotted. What if the crew is not even aware of it? How would you drive awareness with awareness? You can then drive adoption of that. OK, the provided the game is difficult enough, but not too difficult, provided it's attractive. Curiosity will kick in and people will pick up this game because, hey, this is something new and I have a chance to to test myself. How am I doing in the capacity of chief officer trying to fix a dysfunctional ship? There is uh, that curiosity, that desire to explore where that's going to lead. Where am I standing? Am I good at this? These are the motivations uh, that we work with uh, when it comes to, to launching uh, this particular game. I think in addition, there's, there's also quite a lot of feedback that mobile games are highly well received among seafarers. Uh, and and you know that uh, there are some other other uh, applications that are relating more to health based that have a relatively high uh, retention rate among among seafarers as well. So I, I think the feedback that we have from from the, the people on shore is uh, overwhelmingly uh, good on, on on this application. Yep, I have a question. Um, so this is a, a learning application. Did you guys also consider how it might be used also to provide some feedback? So yes. feedback on, yeah, can you just express so, a little bit about that? Absolutely. So you get feedback throughout uh, the game and you do that in terms of uh, scoring. As, a, as I mentioned, you make choices. There is a, a, a particular choice and there is a not so good choice. Depending on the choices you make to manage that crew, you will develop a different storyline. So it's a branching storyline where you get that feedback. You will be able to go back and revisit earlier decisions that you make in the game and see what kind of impact that has on the story. So we try to anticipate a desire to be top performers in the leaderboard when it comes to gaming. And that is a, a natural tendency, whether you play Candy Crush or any other game, people want to come out on top. So we allow people to do this. We develop a clever uh, scoring mechanism and allow people to learn from how they handle a particular situation and what is the impact on the overall standing in the leaderboard. Any, any more questions from judges or? Yeah, I can just ask, oh, sorry. Okay, go for it. Yeah, just one last one. Um, could you see the application also being taken over to onshore, um, onshore application as well? Absolutely. So it we had to choose a character, so chief officer on the ship. Um, but in our experience, 
other people will play that. People with uh, maritime backgrounds, they will play this game because it's uh, it's the curiosity that will pull people into uh, this thing. The the point we're trying to make is you don't have to be a chief officer to play this game. It can be budding people, uh, young officers. It can be deck crew. It does not make any difference. It's uh, it's going to be exciting, in fact, to see how people will do and indeed get solid feedback on how they're performing for a complicated task like this. Thanks, Paul. Maybe one last question uh, from Holly as well. Um, thank you, Brave, to kick off the session. Did you consider incentives for app usage? That's one question. And second one, perhaps it's a very good one. Are you comfortable EC to give access to Wi-Fi? On you know, there's going to be Wi-Fi challenges on both vessels as well, right? So okay. Are you actually so incentives, yes, and we do that indeed through uh, that clever scoring system. If indeed people want to disclose their identity and say, OK, I was the best performer in this game. OK, that is something to uh, to be encouraged. When it comes to Wi-Fi, the format we chose for this game is a text game. That means that probably 95 percent of the, the game mechanics, as well as the story, will be downloaded, downloaded by the initial transaction that you do in iTunes or, or Play Store. So that means that the game is not dependent on the availability of a network. That is extremely important. It's also important to note that the game can be interrupted. So if you want to stop playing three months, that's fine. You will pick up where you left the moment you log back in into the app and you can take the game forward. So we are aware of the issues. We believe that over time they will uh, they will go away. But for now, the game is designed to operate in low or no bandwidth uh, environments. Thank you. To, Thank you, team. Just one yeah. more if I could add in. Um, how many scenarios do you plan to have initially and how long will each sure. scenario take? Sure. So we're talking about uh, probably a voyage, a theoretical voyage of this uh, ill-fated bulk carrier for four months. Uh, we're talking about five minutes of uh, play time per day per person. So we're talking about lots and lots of scenarios because every choice you make will branch out into a different uh, ending for the for the game. But the moment you can clearly define the objective, which is improve morale on board. OK, that's an that is not a, a black or white, a one or zero outcome, but some people will do better in fixing, addressing issues on board. So um, you get a variable outcome in scores. That is, uh, that's how this is going to end up. Excellent. Thank you. I think we need to. We do need to move on to the next one now. I think otherwise we will. We started early, but we're. Um...